So though I think that there is abundant evidence for God's existence, I also realize that you will never interpret that evidence in this way. You will always bring your naturalistic assumptions to the evidence and draw different conclusions. However, I don't think that's the end of our argument because I think we need to compare your worldview to my worldview with respect to what's going on in our argument at all. How is any argumentation possible? And I'm going to argue now for the impossibility of the contrary. That is, within my worldview, I can explain to you why there is logic. In my worldview, I can explain to you why there is causality. In my worldview, I can explain to you why there are moral absolutes, why I believe that human beings are free and have dignity. But in your worldview, there couldn't be any logic. Why not? Well, matter in motion, that's your worldview. The logic isn't material and it's not in motion. The laws of logic are abstract entities. The laws of logic are not something you can touch. They're not physical. The laws of logic are universal in application. They're not particular temporal events or experiences. And they're absolute. They're without qualification. And so within your worldview, there could be no laws of logic. Atheists cannot make sense out of reasoning. They cannot make sense out of science. They cannot make sense out of morality. They cannot make sense out of human freedom. Stop and think about this. If what the atheist says about us as human beings is true, we're all nothing more but animals, right? We've all evolved from the primordial slime, and what a funny story that is, but we have another, <laughs> another night to talk about that. And in this natural development of us as human beings, our craniums evolved too, and there's gray matter in here, and this gray matter is controlling what's coming out my vocal cords, out my mouth. And that gray matter is subject to the laws of chemistry and biology, physics. And therefore, what I say is just as predictable as a weed growing. It's just the laws of physics and chemistry and biology working their way out. If what the atheist says about us is true, we don't really have freedom to look at evidence and make a decision what to believe. We just end up doing what the laws of physics require us to do. And therefore, if naturalism is true, there could never be any reasoning that supports naturalism because men don't reason. They're just white rats that are conditioned to operate the way they do and say the things that they do. And so the very debate that takes place between you and the atheist already assumes what? Human freedom and dignity. And that's what I mean by arguing from the impossibility of the contrary. A transcendental proof of God's existence can be put this way. And I'm going to give you the most general form of it. And then as you can see here, there are many versions that you can use depending on what is relevant to your discussion or what you're interested in. The transcendental proof for God's existence is that without him, you couldn't prove anything. The transcendental proof for God's existence is that without him, you couldn't prove anything. The very process of reasoning, the very attempt to prove things, already is committed to the Christian worldview, not atheism. And if you were committed to the atheistic worldview, you would destroy the possibility of reasoning in the, in the various ways that I've already illustrated for you. In the outline, um, I've talked about the transcendental proof from the concept of causality, the toothpaste proof. From the concept of necessity, everybody uses the notion of necessity in their reasoning. But in a chance world, listen closely, in a chance world, is anything necessary? No, there's, there's neither conceptual nor empirical or psychological or any other kind of necessity. For simplicity, I'll just use the cosmological argument. The cosmological argument says that I have an experience of D which required something to cause it. We'll call that C. But C had to have something cause it, which is B. And therefore, there must be a first cause, which we call God. 
The first cause, God. Now, as you can see, in the nature of the case, this argument is making God out to be what? One more natural cause in the chain. Secondly, in this argument, I have assumed that the unbeliever can make sense of the relationship of C to D and B to C without bringing God into the picture at all. And I have criticized that approach to argument. What I'm now proposing is not that we make God one more of the causes in the chain, but rather that we look at this whole way of reasoning, the concept of cause, and say there could be no concept of cause if God did not exist. God is the precondition for the intelligible use of causal reasoning. If there weren't this God, we couldn't draw any causal connections between toothpaste and squeezing, stubbing our toes in pain, or smoking and cancer, or anything. It's the concept of cause that I'm arguing for, rather than God being one of the causes. And so the doctrine of creation is presupposed. It's taken for granted when we approach the world and our experience reasoning in a causal scientific way. Likewise, the concept of order already presupposes God as the designer. The concept of rationality was the debate that I um, pursued with Gordon Stein. The laws of logic presuppose not an atheistic but a theistic worldview. How about morality? When Edward Tobish at UC Davis argued that he couldn't believe in God because then God would have allowed his innocent relatives to have died at Auschwitz. I tried to turn the tables by pointing out that if you take an atheistic approach to reality, you have no basis for condemning Hitler at all because what one animal does to another set of animals is morally irrelevant. The very fact that you want to condemn Hitler already shows that you're using a moral approach to the universe which you can only make sense out of in the Christian worldview. We've argued about freedom and dignity. I said if our brains are nothing more but matter in motion, then we don't have any freedom and dignity to make the decisions we do. And if time allowed me, I'd like to point out to you that anything you like to talk about, you like to talk about opera, you like to talk about baseball, you like to talk about legal matters, you like to talk about science or industry or money, anything in human experience you like to talk about, it will turn out that the unbeliever cannot make sense of what he or she is saying without borrowing from the Christian worldview. The proof of God's existence is that without him, you couldn't prove anything. God is the precondition for the intelligibility of all human experience and reasoning.